Well, good morning. good morning, and welcome to our Sunday morning service here in High Street. Uh, and again, uh, a very special welcome for those who are watching uh, online at home. Uh, just some announcements uh, today. Uh, first of all, uh, home groups will meet online as arranged uh, during the coming week. And to say that the copies of the Methodist Prayer Focus that comes out at this time of the year, every year, are now available this morning. There are copies in the vestibule, and if you could pick those up if you're wanting to, uh, to, to use this, please pick up a copy that we don't charge for. And as I've said many times, we don't ask people to pay to pray. Then the last announcement really is, uh, is a sad one. One of our older members, uh, Mrs. Phyllis Anderson, uh, has passed away just this morning. Uh, no details yet of when the, the funeral might be, so we we remember the, the family of Phyllis, their daughter Jill, and the other daughters, and the other and the extended family circle used to live in our Bow Gardens, and just been for the last number of years uh, in the uh, Ivy Nursing Home in, in Banbridge. So we think of that family at this time. Pray God's comfort and blessing on them as they as as they mourn her loss. Say also that the restrictions that uh, we know have been introduced this week regarding uh, visiting homes means that I myself am restricted to emergency visits only uh, to people's homes. This has been communicated to all ministers uh, by Methodist Church in Ireland, but I want to say please do not hesitate to contact me by phone if there's something that you want to talk to me about. And please continue to pray about the present situation that sadly, as we've been hearing this week, looks like it's going to last for, uh, for quite a considerable time. It's just great to, to see you know, still so many people uh, out and slowly but surely we're having and getting the confidence, uh, hope that people feel safe uh, coming into uh, the, the church environment. Now, today is the last Sunday in September and it's the time of the year when we usually hold a service to focus on world development and relief. And World Development and Relief coordinates the Methodist Church in Ireland's international development work that, that seeks to support partners that we work with in various parts of the world. Some of those partners you will hear about today. And to say that like ourselves here in Ireland, COVID-19 has and is continuing to have a major impact on people's lives. And many of our World Development Relief partners have been deeply affected. Many charities that we know across the country have had their income dramatically curtailed as a result of the virus. And World Development and Relief is no different. And so during this service you will hear of the need more than ever uh, for people, Methodist people across Ireland to give as generously as they can to this fund in order that we are able to fulfil the promises that we have already made as a church to support these projects over a three year period. And you will also be told of the different ways that, 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 that you can give. Johnny, if you could put up the... All who are here today have seen out on your, your seats that uh, you've received the World Development Relief Annual Report that gives details of how and what projects that we support through this fund. And I will be sending this report out by email to all who I have email addresses for over the coming week, especially relevant for those who are uh, watching this from home. The theme of today's service as you see on the screen, is life in all its fullness. And so we're going to begin our service of worship with a call to worship that's going to be uh, on the screen. Please respond with the words that are in heavy black type. It's rather small, but if you could join with me in the black, uh, in the words in black type. God of justice and mercy, we come before you now with an awareness of those whose prayers today are sighs, sobs, or even screams for help. Together, soften our hearts to care more keenly 
Sharpen our minds to think more clearly and clench our fists to fight more fiercely for those who are oppressed. Amen. Our opening song uh, this morning is uh, Hosanna, Praise is Rising. Again, if you have your mass on, we can sing uh, quietly, but then just keep our seats as we, as we sing this song of worship.
So let's continue to worship as we pray together. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you once again for this opportunity to, to gather, to, to worship. You are God who is love. You who are faithful. For you are God who never changes, who is the same yesterday, today and forever. And today we want to acknowledge your sovereignty over this world. To declare that you are in control when we travel through circumstances in life that we cannot control. And so in the midst of the uncertainty of these times that we are living through as a result of this virus, Lord, help us to seek your face in these days and to live out our lives with a, a fresh dependence upon your grace and your mercy, the promise of your presence your presence with us every moment of every day. And Lord, on this World Development Sunday, we acknowledge that you, sovereign God, that we sometimes talk of being of one world, but we know in reality that we are not. That though we try to push the truth out of our minds, we know that we are two worlds. We are a world of the rich and the world of the poor. A world of those who are well fed and those who will even go hungry this day. For those who are healthy and for those who are sick. Two worlds between which the divide seems to grow ever greater. The contrast ever more shocking. For our apathy towards such things, we say, Lord, forgive us. We confess that what is true of the world as a whole is true of the rich world that we live in. That even our society is riven in two between the haves and the have-nots, between the wealthy and the poor, the well-to-do and the underprivileged. Two societies between which the divide seems to grow even greater, the contrast ever more stark. For our apathy towards such things, Lord, forgive us. This morning we confess that though we speak of pursuing justice and seeking change, few of us are actually willing to, to make sacrifices to have less so that others may have more. Why do we close our eyes to challenges that we would rather not face? And in doing so, ignoring injustice so long as it does not touch us. Lord, for our apathy towards such things, Lord, forgive us. Sovereign God, help us not just to speak of one world, nor even simply to, to pray for it. Lord, on this World Development Sunday, we ask that you would teach us to work towards the fulfillment of that vision as we pray in and through the name of Jesus, our Lord. And together we share together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now I want to have a word to the boys and girls this morning. Um, anybody know what these are? What are they? Yes. There's a Walking sticks, Emily. Yeah, you guess that and so on. Walking sticks. I don't know how many of you enjoy walking. I was hearing some people were out walking yesterday. And um, if you're going walking, particularly if it's a very, a very cold day or in a winter's day, you're going to need various items of equipment, such as you need a, <coughs> to bring yourself a heavy coat, wouldn't you? It's getting cooler now, isn't it? You might have to wear under the coat a 
you know, various kinds of, of fleeces. And of course, you'd have to have your your Ulster hat, wearing, making sure that that's uh, seen for everybody that you might meet. And of course, you bring your Ulster scarf with you, just to keep you uh, nice and warm. And these are Alison's boots. I don't have a pair at the moment, and uh, so you might need a pair of these if you're going to go walking, particularly if you're walking up into the mountains. Anybody know what the highest mountain in Northern Ireland is? Yeah? Sleeve Gunner, do, do you know what height it is? Roughly, anybody know? Yeah? Two, would you say 2,000 feet? Even higher than that. It is down a bit. <laughs> it's 2,789 feet. I have to say, I didn't check that myself. 850 meters if you're using that. Does anybody know what the highest mountain in the world it is? Yeah. Mount Everest. Anybody know what height? There it is. Anybody know what height it is? 10, it's even more than that. Higher, higher. As Bruce Forsyth used to say many years ago. Yeah? 20, even higher, higher. It's over 29,000 feet. In fact, 8.5 kilometers in distance, 5.3 miles from the bottom to get right up to the top. It's very, very high. Even the equipment that I showed you there, the coats and so on in your car, that wouldn't be good enough. You're, you need oxygen even to breathe up there. You have to bring your oxygen tanks with you because there's, the air is very thin and you can't breathe. And you know, for years people said, you cannot go that high. No one can climb this mountain. But we know that in 1953, some of our older folk here this morning will know, in 1953, that's 70 years ago, there were two men, does anybody know their names? Yeah, Edwin Hillary and Tenzing Norgay, the, uh, the guide. And they were the first of the people to climb it. Do you know how many people have climbed it since? Roughly. I was reading this. 9,000 people have climbed to the roof of the world. People thought and came to the point having watched Norgay and Hillary climb it for the first time. Do you know something? We can do this. We may be able to do that as well. It's a very beautiful part of the world. You can see it there with Everest. And let me show you a picture. It's not totally clear, but there's a buildings. Just to, you see the Everest in the background, and there are buildings. And this is a, a, a school. Does anybody know what country uh, that uh, that Ever, that Everest is in? Yeah. No, almost Nepal. Nepal. And this is a school, a picture of a school. Those buildings in the middle there is a picture of a school. It's called Samarang Secondary School. And you know that many of the children in Nepal have trouble going to school. Now, I know you guys had lots of trouble going to school for the last six months. And I'm sure you're glad going back to school. But these guys, the young people, the boys and girls in Nepal, many of them have trouble going to school. Not because they're... Their schools might be hard to get to because, you know something, they walk to school. They walk sometimes many miles to school. And to go to school, the families, their mums and dads, need to pay for a uniform to wear, for the books that they use, and they also have to pay some money to the school. Some things that we do not have to do. And why? Because many of the families who live in Nepal are poor. They don't have the money for this. There are families where there is only a, a mother. For, for all kinds of reasons, there's no dads there. And they just can't afford to send their kids to school. They, many mums thought it was impossible how they would love their, their boys and girls, their sons and their daughters to have an education, to go to school, but they never thought it was possible to be able to go to school. Well, there's a, a woman called Bina. She's on the bottom 
right hand as you're looking at it, the picture, the woman with a smiley face. This woman, Bina, believed that she could change that kind of thinking. And she, along with others, started to draw alongside and to help these mothers. And what they do is that they help, that she helped with her team of people, the women to make a little bit more money by showing them how to grow vegetables and to breed goats in order to sell the goats to make some money. I want to say to you this morning that our Methodist Church in Ireland helps Bina and her organisation. It's called Kapila. And they do this by not only giving them money, but also supporting them with our prayers. And as a result of our giving and the giving of other organisations as well, now many more children are able to go to school. The mums are able to, to buy their kids uniforms and books. They're able to pay for the school. And if a boy or a girl can get an education, of course there's a better chance that they will do better in life, that when they grow up, they will be able to find a job and not live in the kind of poverty that their mums and dads were living in. In the photo you can see some of the girls arriving at school at Samarang. And all the pupils uh, are exercising at the other photograph. Do you know that they, they do exercises every morning at the beginning of the school day? Do you do that at Kings Park or Carrick? No? So you start doing all the exercises. Maybe you should do that at the beginning of church every Sunday. We should start with our, with our exercises. But the thing is I want you to remember is this, that just like people thought that no one could climb Mount Everest, or people thought that their children could never go to school, but the thing was they were wrong. And people like Bina are working hard with women and their children so that they can have a fuller life, they can have a better life. And that will be possible if we keep on being generous and giving money to Bina and her team, which is just one of the many projects that Methodist World Development Relief support across the world. So let us just bow our heads and remember this particular project. Lord, we just thank you that we can be taken in our minds today, living in Lurgan, way out across the world to to countries like Nepal where the, the great Mount Everest rises so high up into the, into the clouds. And we think that there will be boys and girls that tomorrow will be heading into that school situated uh, just with Everest in the background. And we just thank you Lord that because of the work of Bina and her team there that they are helping and supporting uh, mums to find the money to provide for books and for uniforms and to pay a little bit towards the education in their schools. Lord, we thank you for them. We continue to pray for them, Lord, uh, particularly in these difficult days when all the countries of the world are being affected by, by this virus. So, Father, we just, uh, we just commit this whole project into your hands today and, and pray your, your blessing on them and stir the hearts of our people, our Methodist people across Ireland, uh, to give to, to Methodist World Development Relief to support projects like Kapila in Nepal, projects of supporting people right across your world, O oh God. And we pray these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to have our readings uh, this morning that are going to come up on the screen. They're John 10, verses 8 uh, to 10. The actual uh, readings will come up here. Then we're going into John chapter 6 this morning. So John chapter 10 from the New Century Version and verse 8. All the people who came before me were thieves and robbers. The sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. And the person who enters through me will be saved and will be able to come in and to go out and find pasture. A thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. But I, says Jesus, came to give life. 
life in all its fullness. And then a reading from John chapter 6. After this, Jesus went across Lake Galilee or Lake Tiberias. Many people followed him because they saw the miracles he did to heal the sick. Jesus went up on a hill and sat down there with his followers. It was almost the time for the Jewish Passover feast. And when Jesus looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where can we buy enough bread for all these people to eat? Jesus asked Philip this question to test him because Jesus already knew what he planned to do. And Philip answered, someone would have to work almost a year to buy enough bread for each person to have only a little piece. And another one of his followers, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said, Here is a boy with five loaves of barley bread and two little fish, and that is not enough for so many people. And Jesus said, Tell the people to sit down. And there was plenty of grass there, and about 5,000 men sat down there. Then Jesus took the loaves of bread, thanked God for them, and gave them to the people who were sitting there. He did the same with the fish, giving as much as the people wanted. When they all had enough to eat, Jesus said to his followers, gather the leftover pieces of fish and bread so that nothing is wasted. And so they gathered up the pieces and filled 12 baskets with the pieces left from the five barley loaves. When the people saw this miracle that Jesus did, they said, he must truly be the prophet who is coming into the world. And we thank God that his word still speaks to us today. We're now going to sing another song, a song by Robin Mark called No, Not By Night.
sense of what they've experienced. They cannot understand why they've experienced but only you. Only you with the comfort and power of your Holy Spirit. It makes sense. Lord, can give a peace that passes understanding. A peace that is better than knowledge. 